Worsley is back 20. for the win. If he can find the double 10 that Steve Brown has just missed. And it Game. is a win sure. for Worsley Animat. to begin. On, Worsley. He almost rubbished that last start, but he is the victor against Steve Brown by four legs to two. Doing so with 81 and a half average just underneath. 112 high checkout, 410 when it came to the finishing. As for Steve Brown, well, he pretty much averaged what he averaged over the course of yesterday in 84 and a half there. A couple of maximums in there, a bit of a purple patch in the middle, but it's John Worsley who runs out a 4-2 victory in our first match of the day. Coming up after the break, Rene Idems, the man who topped the table overnight, takes on Tom Becker. Rene requires 73. Um, adding more legs onto this very impressive legs column that just continues to grow. Game shot on the second leg, Rene Idams. In running, that means his leg difference has gone to plus 14. Well, Becker yesterday was reliant on these types of opportunities. Game shot on the third leg, Tom Becker. 17 going under for Tom Becker. Rene, you require he 18. Will jump and pounce on those sort of opportunities. He slipped in the one again. Great recovery. Two 11s. This is a fantastic placement on the board. People don't like to leave it because of the breakdown, but it is Game such on the a nice leg. double. Rene Idams. And Rene Idams, case in point. 78. And he has looked so comfortable in this game. game. And he Shot. wraps up and the I'm two points Rene of relative Idans. ease. And Rene Idens continues just to go about his business with such efficiency. It's German efficiency at the Super Series. Rene Idens were, were running out a 4-2 victor against Tom Becker. Doing so with an 81 average. Four out of five on the doubles. Well, for Tom Becker... Both darts he had at a double, he hit. But it was the scoring phase that let him down all told. Any items a 4-2 victor coming up after the break. David Kerman against Jim Mayer. Jim, you require 24. Been an impressive performance from Jim Mayer. Game. And he sure. gets the Animat points Jim that it duly Mayer. deserves. A 4-0 victory for the Luxembourgian thrower against David Kerman. Back-to-back 4-0 -back victories against the Scots, doing so with an 88.41 average, 4 out of 9 on the doubles, as for David Kerman. Well, as you can see from the statistics there, there's work for him to do as the day goes along. So, time for a break following the culmination of the first round of fixtures. And after the break, we're going to see Rene Idams in action. Up against John Worsley. <laughs> He'll be at tops. One of his favourite doubles. He's left it at every possible turn and opportunity. Game. And it's shot. a perfect and display of John finishing Worsley. for John Worsley. Four darts at the double. Four darts hit. Four legs won. It's 4 0 against Rennie Items, the man who was top of the table. He struggled on his finishing. He had nine darts at a double, but wasn't able to convert. And that result will open up the group and grab the attention of Steve Brown, who is coming up in our next game against Jim Mayer. Slipping into the 19s, left the option of the 96 finish. This one, much simpler for Steve, but well, it does still pose a question. Is it straightforward or is it 18. split? Game, sure. Straightforward, and match, straight Steve in. Brown. And Steve Brown continues his trend which he followed yesterday, opening up with a defeat. Then he went on a run of four wins, improving as the day went on. Well, there's one of them. Is he going to continue that throughout the day? He joins Rennie Idams at the top of the table. But coming up next, we've got Tom Becker taking on Davy Kirkwin. Him. May begin with a one, two, two. The ball. Bosh! On the first leg. Davey Tom Davy Kirkwin. Kirkwin. One nearly leaves with a break of throw. Just wanted to leave it handy and hope that Davey misses tops. He's going to get two darts, but he's got to come around it. A shuffle to the right. Game shot on the third What leg. a fantastic Davey dart Kerwin. that is from Davey Kerwin. By far his best performance. This has been dominant. He's got it wrong. No score. He's miscounted completely. He's gone for a 1 4 3. Davey, you Another require couple of match team. starts, a couple of opportunities. Need a bit of a mess of them. 
but he will not shot. make and a match. mess of this Davey one. Davy gets over the line in the end, about five minutes later than he probably should have. A bit of a miscount there and a missed opportunity. He's trying to work out what he did wrong there. It was 10 points too many on the finish, but this time Davy gets the points. A 4 1 victory. And that is his second victory of the group. Coming up next, top of the table, Renny Iams takes on Jim Mayer. The pull. Rene, you require 20. As a player, you stand behind in that situation. You think, yes. No score. Certainly in that situation, you think, yes, he's bust the score. Jim, you require 25. Jim May is thinking, yes. Yes. Game yes. Shot the second leg. Jim Meyer. And he leads 2 0. And Steve Brown and John Words will be thinking exactly the same. Four. They Rene don't require, require Jim three. to have like he has here. Two handfuls of darts. Which haven't really registered the blow. Game shot on the third leg. Rene That's a blow guess. though. Ended up in the fives. Maybe he didn't expect this opportunity. He's dug himself out of the hole. Game, sure. He caused and the problems for himself, Rene but Idems. at times, brilliant there from Rene Idems. He turned that game around. It looked at points that Jim Mayer was going to run away with that one, but Rene Idems showing true champion quality there at times to really pull that one back. Although the overall average of 81.31 doesn't mean right home, there was moments in that turnaround. And it does mean that John Worsley, Tom Becker, is going to have quite a few more eyes on it in our next match. Too much. Tots of Becker. Game it's a on the Desmond Jewel. It's to a piece. He's himself on 96 to get the job done. One hundred and thirty-seven, John. You require. And it's going to have to go. You feel two in hand, a double eighteen Game. for a big Shot. win and the match. for John, John Worsley. Worsley. He had to dig in there to get the better of Tom Becker by four legs to three, and that means he moves on to double digits. He moves on to ten points in the group. It wasn't a vintage match, but it's one that is won by Worsley. In a last leg decider by four legs to three. Coming up after the break, Steve Brown could join Rene Idams on 12 points at the top of the table if he can get the better of David Kerwin after this short break. 24. There'd be some popularity in the Brown household yeah, if he could bet the bully Steve does a 1 2 4 to get the break back and to pull it back to 2 1. Means even a max, he can't claw back the deficit. He can't even leave a finish with a max. He's going to have to hit and hope. He does the hit part. Now over to the hope. Davey's got six darts here from 1-2-1. One, one. Steve Brown missed a dart at the ball for the match on the back of the 1-2-7 combination in the last leg. 97. Davey Kerwin is going to get free in hand at double 12 to win the match now. And all Steve Brown can do is apply some mountable pressure. And that Maybe is exactly what he 24. does. Both players on a finish after 12 in the decider. And Game. it's Davy sure. Kerman who keeps Davey his cool Kerwin. and survives the mid-match march of Steve Brown to win by four legs to three and to scupper Steve's chances of going level on points with many items at the summit of the table. That's the tail of the tape. That 1-2-4 finisher Brown began a bit of an assault, but it is Kerwin who held himself cool to win by four legs to three. And every single game in round three going 4-3. Coming up after the break, John Worsley and Jim Meyer are going to be on the Super Series stage. John, you require 95. You're dressed like a scene from the in-betweeners. Double 19 for Worsley for 3-0. That's pitched perfectly. Game shot pitched the perfect and it's all John singing, all Worsley. dancing for John Worsley. He leads 3-0 at that target. 
for the match. It's tops. Nice drag below. Double ten for a comprehensive success. Which yeah, does his shot. legs difference the world of good. Worthy. John Worthy gets the better of Jim Mayer by four legs to nil. And the Womble is making some severe moves on Tuesday at the Super Series. A 4 nil success, an 87 average, 50% on the doubles. This is more like the player that made it through the Champions Week in Series 3. Is he making his move in Series 4? Coming up after the break, the man who occupies top spot, many items is in action against Davy Kerwin after this. That is six missed darts at a double in this leg, and Kerwin comes back for 76 for the double break for a 3 0 lead. It's going to be two at double eight. Game shot on the third Clinical leg. for Kerwin. Kerwin. John, you're As play goes on during the day, Worsley here looking for 1 2 1 to back the break up and to lead 2 0. Down for trouble 17. To obtain him a dart at the ball. Oh, it's a miscount. It's a miscount. That's incredible. He thought he wanted one free one. Renee, you require 10. Two fives. No but it's score. gone the other side. And Kerwin's got a match winning David, chance now. Eight. The darts have gone down for Rene. He thinks it's job done. Game, shot, and the match. David Kerwin continues this upwards trend he's going on at the moment. He's won his last three matches. It's a hat-trick. He's played himself into contention in this group. He's closing down the group leaders. But speaking of group leaders, that is a heavy defeat for the man who went in. Top of the table, Rennie Idems loses 4-1 to Dave Kirkwin. Coming up next, we've got Steve Brown and Tom Becker. Which would put him to the summit. And he is racing and motoring towards that finishing line now. One hundred and what a setup. Forty four. Fourteen data to get the job done for one. He's got six. Game. But only needs sure. a two, and, and Steve Brown heads Steve to the Brown. summit of the league table on legs difference by getting the better of Becker by four legs to one. Doing so an 86 average. And even then, the bomber thinks there's still more in the tank. A 4-1 win for Steve Brown against Tom Becker. David Kerwin and John Worsley kicks off the final round of fixtures next. D. That could be the last one he throws today. David, you require 16. So, double eight for Kerwin for 4 1 for the win for 10 points. Game. And there it Shot. is, a 4 1 success David for David Kerwin. Kerwin against John Worsley. It moves him on to 10 points in the group. It derails the Wombles. Good day. He was going overground. Now he finishes underground. The Wombles in position three. 81. Game, shot. And, and Maya is Jim the victor. Meyer. Getting the better of Tom Becker by four legs to two. And that moves him on to six points. Well, they can't be separated, the pair. Six points minus ten legs difference. They can be separated by a 14 score, 4 2 score line here. With a 79 average, 4 out of 15 on the doubles, 81 high checkout. Maya into the winner's enclosure. And so we go to the final game of the session. It's a top of the table tussle as Steve Brown takes on many items. We're going to be watching that in your company after this. Steve, you require 89. Another bust. And an opportunity sails by. Game shot on the they third leg. They both punished Steve each Brown. other here. He's going to do better than that. Because he's going to get two at 32. Game. To win! Sure. And, and you can hear what it Rene meant to Rene Idam because it's going to be he who is going to be the table topper going into the final day's action here at the Super Series. He has bettered Steve Brown by four legs to two, doing the double over the bomber, and that's the reason why he's the table topper overnight.
An 85.67 average, two maximums in there, four out of 12 when it came to the finishing as well. Many items then gets the better with Steve Brown by four later two. He's the player with the top overnight. Let's get some reaction up on the balcony where Chris Murphy is being joined by Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, uh, Matt, Rene Idams has kind of just been treading water, hasn't he? And without being brilliant, without being one of the standout players today, he's still at the top. Same yesterday as well. He's just taking the opportunities that are presenting to him. And I've mentioned a few times and that concern continues in the fact that he's not making a lot of these opportunities himself. He's waiting for them to come along. And you feel like eventually he's going to get caught out. He's been caught out a couple of times today, but... Time's running out now for people to do that to him. And he's top of the table going into the final days of action. And is he going to get away with this one? Quite possibly so. A significant result then in the last match. Whoever won it would have been top. Rennie Adams got the win 4-2. But out of all of the 15 results today, what else really stood out as significant for you? I think just the whole story of the day has been a real interesting watch. And I looked at John Worsley and we said he needed some big wins and he got them. You see, he had the 4-0 against Rennie Idams and then the 4-0 against Jim Mayer. But then the one that really stood out for me was when he's got those results, he's got himself into that position. He wasn't able to convert. He lost to David Kirkwin four legs to one, who, by the way, has had a fantastic day today and someone I expected to see a little bit more from. I just didn't expect he'd flip a switch like he has and produce the darts he has today. Yeah, that victory for David Kirkwin over John Worsley, that really did bunch things up a little bit in that group, didn't it? Because it means that there are four runners in the race tomorrow, really. I think when I came up and spoke to you about the halfway stage, we had a look through the table and I suggested at that point that this was going to be a table that splits in half and we're going to have a player that wins the bottom half and a player that wins the group. And I was sort of already getting to that position where right there are Group B and Group A winners and here's our Group C contenders. But Davey then produced four wins from four and he's been really good today. He's been very solid at times. And this is what we expect from someone who is a Scottish international and has had two big semi-finals on the WF Tour. And he just took a bit of time to settle. He mentioned that he's a police officer and some of the things that he's seen or he has to deal with. And maybe darts is a little bit a fun and escape for him. But then maybe when it got to that point where he's losing regularly, the fun side of it stopped. And maybe we then saw the grit and the determination that Davey's got inside. Yeah, managed to arrest that slide, didn't he? Sorry, I'm not really sorry. Um, but yeah, both players, John Worsley and Davey Kerwin, had what you might say an almost perfect day. They both had four out of five. I'm going to stress the word almost perfect because they were also involved in a bit of uh, mathematical meltdowns, weren't they, as well? We can see those here. So first of all, talk us through this one from Kerwin. I, I wish I could. <laughs> I, I wish I knew what was going on. I believe he just thought he'd left one four three. He should have been over on the 19, stayed on the 17, ended up busting it by 10. John Worsley, he, he, I can't even describe what he's got. He surely thought he won one eleven. wanted the bullseye, went for tops. I, Davey, I can kind of understand a little bit, a bit of inexperience, but John Wurz has been around the game so long. That one was the more surprising of the two, but it's going to make a nice little compilation video for YouTube <laughs> later on, isn't it? Absolutely. Get the maths right. It really is important. It will be recorded as well. But after all those results were recorded today, this is how the table looks. And as we were saying, Rennie Idem is still on top, but it looks like there's going to be a four-way fight in the final day. What a finale we're going to get tomorrow when we look at those four places. Davies all on his first game. He's got to come out tomorrow firing. He's got to win that. He did do that on day one. He came out, won his opening match by a sizable scoreline. So we know he doesn't mind that early slot. He's got to come out and do that tomorrow. He comes out and loses that first game. He's going to start losing touch with that pack and we'll probably go back to being a three-horse race. So... We'll see how the fixtures come out as well, because that first game, he might be playing one of those top players as well, which could end up being a very important game, a double whammy, so to speak. So for Davey, I think it's all on the first match. For the rest, they may be at one game grace, but it's going to be very interesting first couple of laps. I know you're not with us tomorrow. Henry asked you for a name for the week, so I'll ask you for a name for this group. And I, I know you've been bidding for Brown, but a couple of times he's had the chance to go top and hasn't taken it. He hasn't, and he's had the opportunity in his hands that last match as well. He could have been going out in the position Rene Idems is, but I'm going to stick with Brown. I still think he gets through this group, and John Worsley, he's someone you've got to consider as well, but 
at times the action just goes a bit flicky and it, it gets quite hard to sort of support that, so to speak. So I'd like to go with Worsley, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Brown. There we go. Sticking to his guns, Matthew. A pleasure to have your company for the last couple of days. Pleasure to have your company as well, and we hope to have it again tomorrow. We are back for the conclusion of this group, 9.30 a.m. here on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel and live on Sporty Stuff TV. We'll see you then.